So uh, I'm representing Sinvestaf. Uh, this is a research institute in Mexico, and particularly I am from campus of Quereta. Uh, and uh, uh, so to, today I will speak about uh, uh, an approach which we developed recently for solving a variety of problems. And um, among them, uh, first of all, I, I will consider here the classical inverse two spectra problem. Um, uh, next, a more general um, inverse problem, which can be formulated more or less in the following way. So, uh, there is some wave which is um, coming interacting with some potential Q of X, and then the result of this interaction is measured at the end point. So we have the information about, about our solution for several frequencies rho k at the initial point. So we have the initial value and the initial value of its derivative. And also we measure the response uh, at the uh, end point. So we have these numbers LK. And uh, having this information, we should recover Q of X. So this problem in general uh, is ill posed, and uh, I, I will speak a little bit um, uh, in more details about this, this problem uh, a little bit further. And uh, uh, next, uh, I will consider this uh, problem, uh, the inverse problems uh, on quantum graphs. So, uh, quantum graphs is, is uh, now a very popular topic, uh, especially after the discovery of graphene. Uh, so, um, it, it is, in fact, uh, the following thing. Uh, uh, until the discovery, I think it was uh, called um, a differential equations network, which is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, well, a, a more appropriate term, in fact. But now it's quantum graph, and especially I will consider quantum trees. So just uh, graphs without cycles. Um, and uh, um, so we have here a differential equation on each edge. Uh, of the graph, some conditions um, uh, at the boundary of the graph, and some compatibility conditions, which I will specify a little bit later, uh, in, in the interior vertices. And so, from some information, uh, from some information, we should recover the potentials on each edge. Uh, um, uh, more specifically, in this talk, I will consider the problem of recovery uh, of these uh, potentials from the so-called Weil matrix, which is uh, uh, nothing but the Dirichlet to Neumann map of the graph, in fact. So, this, uh, uh, in fact, uh, these three problems which I will consider, they are not the, the whole set of problems which can be solved by the approach which will, uh, I will present to you today. So, uh, just several notations. So, uh, I, I will speak uh, here only about the Schrodinger type equation. So, the sturm liouville equation here for me, it's, uh, it will be such an equation uh, where Q will belong to L2 uh, on some interval. Sorry, this pi should be L. Uh, the same letter here. And uh, rho, in general, is a, a, a complex spectral parameter. So, in the beginning, Q will be a complex valued function. Then I will specify uh, in, in, in an appropriate place uh, that it, it will be a real valued function when I will speak about the inverse problem, just to not complicate uh, here things and notations. And uh, uh, during the whole talk, I, I will uh, uh, use the, these notations. So, just two solutions 
the fundamental system of solutions of this equation. Uh, the solution phi, which is 1 at 0, its derivative is some, in general, complex number h. And the solution s, which is 0 at the, at the origin, and its derivative is 1. So I will, I will work with these solutions. And uh, the first result which, uh, which I want to, to present to you is uh, a result which we obtained together with Luis Navarro from uh, Venezuela and uh, Sergei Torba from uh, Mexico uh, in 2017. Uh, this result is just the following, that these solutions admit such series representations, okay? where uh, these uh, functions j to n and j to n plus 1, they are spherical Bessel functions, which are introduced in this way. Uh, so the spectral parameter rho participates in the argument of, of these uh, 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 spherical Bessel functions. And uh, in fact, uh, we will work uh, closely with these coefficients uh, of these representations, gn of x and sn of x. You will see that everything reduces to, to just uh, working, uh, dealing with these coefficients. And they contain, um, even the very first coefficient contains ev uh, all the in uh, information which we need, in fact. Uh, for example, when solving the inverse problem, look, what happens? The coefficient g0 is just the solution phi uh, corresponding to, to rho equal to 0, okay? Minus 1. And uh, uh, something similar we have for the very first coefficient of this uh, series representation. So it is the solution s uh, for rho equal to 0. This, in fact, will mean the following, that it is sufficient to find the one of these very first coefficients. We are we don't need all 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 the series, all other coefficients. Just one coefficient will um, allow us to recover everything. In fact, the potential and even the boundary conditions. We will see it uh, right now. So uh, uh, th there are a lot of properties of this series. Uh, they converge point-wise for every uh, row, uh, a complex row. For every uh, fixed x, the series converge uniformly on any compact set of, of the complex plane of the variable row. But most importantly, most important will be two properties which I will give uh, just after this uh, slide. So this is just to, to remind you that such kind of series are known in mathematical analysis since times of, um, of uh, Neumann, uh, Karl Gottfried, not, not John von Neumann, just Karl Gottfried, Gottfried Neumann uh, and Gegenbauer. So these kind of series are called Neumann series in Bessel functions. Uh, and they're quite well studied. So in the fundamental uh, treatise of Watson of 1922, there, there is quite a lot of information about such kind of series. There are some interesting papers on that and in, even recent monographs dedicated to this kind of, of series. But uh, for us, uh, it is important that this series in, in this framework possess very special properties, which I will talk you uh, about. So uh, first, uh, which is the origin of this series representation? It is very simple. Uh, it is well known uh, since the work of, of Povsner of uh, 48 that uh, the solutions phi and s, they admit these kind of representations, of uh, integral representations, uh, where kc and ks, in fact, are uh, uh, continuous and even absolutely continuous functions. Uh, so, um, uh, in other words, in fact, what does it mean? That these solutions phi, uh, phi minus cosine and s minus sine over rho, they 
belong to the Paley Wiener space, just uh, PW uh, 2x, okay, 2 for L2. So they belong to the Paley Wiener space just because their um, uh, their uh, Fourier transform are finite func uh, uh, finite supportly, uh, finitely supportly supported functions. So, in fact, from uh, from this, we immediately arrive at the possibility to represent these solutions in such form. Okay, this is just a, a, a a consequence of, of, of this fact. Uh, because these uh, spherical basic functions are uh, an example of a basis in the Paley Wiener space. Okay? So we have this representation. Uh, this is just uh, uh, the continuation of, of uh, Springer uh, book's exposition. Okay, so there, are, there is some information. Uh, uh, about this uh, uh, series representations, Neumann series of Bessel functions uh, in, in both uh, books. And uh, so the most important features of, of these representations, they are here. So first of all, since uh, the fir very first coefficients have such a nice form, we can see that the potential Q can be recovered directly from each of them. So it is sufficient to find g g naught or s naught, and we recover q from these two uh, nice formulas. Okay, so the very first coefficient is enough to to solve the inverse problem. In fact, and moreover, uh, for example, this number h, which uh, is in the boundary condition, it is recovered to, uh, as just the first derivative of g naught at the origin. This is b because of this, b b because phi is a solution. So, so uh, I have that Q is this phi over phi. So from from there I obtain this form. Okay, this this is just that. Okay, now uh, another uh, crucial feature here is the following, and this is in fact due to the Paley Wiener space, uh, which is behind uh, this result. That if we consider the partial sum of each of these solutions, for example, Sn or phi n. Then we have the following estimates that the difference between the, let's say, exact solution S and the approximate solution Sn, which is the partial sum, sum can be estimated by some function epsilon n, which depends, on, of course, on n, which is positive, tends to zero, depends on x, but doesn't depend on rho, when rho is real, which means that for very small rho, for very large low, uh, rho, we guarantee the same accuracy. Okay, this is a very important fact here. Of course, for both solutions S and and phi. So these two crucial features of these representations make them so useful for solving all this variety of problems which I'm, I'm talking about. So first let us consider this uh, inverse two-spectre problem. This is the classical stuff. We should, we consider uh, first this sturm liouville problem with some boundary conditions which include this constant h small and h capital. Let, let us uh, here suppose that everything is real. Okay, if the potential is real valued, H and H capital are, are real constants. Uh, then uh, the characteristic function of this problem is this delta of lambda. Okay, uh, so its zeros co coincide with the eigenvalues of, of the problem. And uh, of course, our solution phi fulfills the first uh, condition. Uh, so uh, this is why the, uh, um, uh, the spectrum of the problem uh, um, consists exactly 
of zeros of this uh, of this function delta of lambda. And we consider uh, the second uh, Sturm-Liouville problem, uh, for example, with these conditions. So the first one is is the same, but the second, for example, the Dirichlet condition. And uh, the problem consists in the following: given two spectra, so the the, the spectrum of the first problem and the spectrum of the second problem, we need to recover Q and also the constants H small and H capital. So. Uh, uh, of course, uh, this problem is very well studied. There are uh, um, uh, criteria, uh, so the so-called the characterization of spectral data. So, for example, uh, in in this situation, which I consider it can be uh, found in in many um, in many sources, like for example the book by Yurko. From a more general situation, uh, in for example here uh, in 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 the work by Sovchuk and Shkalikov uh, for um, uh, quite bad potentials. In fact, this case is, uh, can be also studied with the approach which I am considering here, uh, so with distribution potentials. And uh, of course, there are some uh, numerical methods developed for this uh, uh, spe uh, inverse spectral problem. But uh, they uh, have uh, quite a lot of limitations, all the, all the methods. Uh, so this is just a small list of, of papers. Uh, among these li limitations, for example, the following. I even he have here a quotation from a quite well-known paper by Randall and Sachs, who, who did a lot uh, in, in this subject. Uh, they claim the following, that in general, uh, so in theory, for example, the boundary conditions can be recovered, but they believe that numerically, uh, it, it, however, that this is numerically feasible, uh, we don't believe, however, that this is numerically feasible in most cases. So this is just a quotation. Uh, our approach works perfectly. We recover the boundary conditions without uh, any problem with, with a good accuracy. So uh, what is the method? The method is completely simple. Okay, is is uh, uh, almost elementary. So we just consider another solution of the same equation. I call it the solution psi. This solution psi uh, uh, let uh, let us ask it satisfy the following conditions at L at the right end point. So it is just one there, and its derivative is minus h. This means that when, uh, when we have a, uh, uh, um, well, uh, we have an eigenvalue of the first Sturm-Liouville problem, which I wrote before, uh, then this uh, function psi becomes an eigenfunction of that problem. So, of course, it admits uh, a series, Neumann series of Bessel functions of this kind. Q can be recovered exactly as before from, from the very first coefficient of this series. The constant H capital can be recovered from the first uh, derivative of, of the first coefficient. So, and how we use now this, this solution? In a very simple way. So we know that when rho k is an eigenvalue of the first Sturm-Liouville problem, and rho k are given, okay, then both phi and psi will be automatically eigenfunctions. Okay? This means that they become linearly dependent, and this means that there exists such constants beta k that we have such an equality. And moreover, this beta k can be found very easily. So we find, uh, since, uh, since this function psi is 1 at L, we have that beta k is just this expression, k, okay, nothing else. So, uh, OK, this, this is the first observation. And uh, so we first need to find precisely this beta k. So we need to find the uh, values of this phi, of our solution phi, at the end point for all rho k. How we do it? We just 
use the information about the second spectrum, uh, the, the second sturm will problem. So, uh, we know that the characteristic function of the second sturm will problem is precisely this function phi of mu k l. Uh, so, when mu k is such that we have zero, we uh, are working in this case with the eigenvalue of the second problem. So we use just this knowledge about mu k to construct this system of equations from which we find the coefficients gn of l. So our coefficients at the last point, at the right hand point. So we find them and, uh, and this system is good. We have a result uh, about its unique solvability and so on, uh, uh, which was obtained together with uh, Sergei Torba and published in this paper in um, 21. So we find these coefficients g n of l, and this means that we already can construct this function phi for any row evaluated at L, but for any row. This means that now we can construct it at, at the points of another of the second spectrum, okay, at row K. So we, we do it and find the, the uh, constants beta K. And after that is just, so we have beta K, we construct the system uh, again, the, this is a system of linear algebraic equations to find the coefficients g n of x, tau n of x. But the most important point here is that we don't need all these uh, coefficients. We need just the first one. And this gives us the whole solution of the inverse problem. Uh, in practice, this means that with five, six equations, so we truncate here this system and uh, uh, five, six, uh, six coefficients here is just sufficient to, to construct a good, uh, a good uh, solution of the inverse problem. So we solve this system and we find Q, H small and H capital. This is the whole method. Okay. It's, uh, it's absolutely elementary. Um, so this is just an illustration for, for such a potential, how it, it approximates, of course. We, uh, so this is just from 10 eigenpairs, for example. This is the, the accuracy and so on. We have much more examples, of course. I, I will not uh, dwell on, upon this. Uh, so more general inverse problem is this one. So I have given the initial values for some for some rho k, I have the initial values of my solution. I have the initial values of, of the derivative. And I have the uh, values of the solution at the end point. So the example, the practical example, why this problem is, is interesting. For example, consider a plane wave which, which is coming from minus infinity. Okay? Interacts with the potential. We measure the result of this inter interaction at the last endpoint, and we should rec recover Q. Okay? So, in this case, A of rho k is 1, B of rho k is minus I of rho k, because of, of the uh, form of this uh, plane wave, and LK are given. So, we recover Q. Another example, uh, uh, in, in, you can believe me that, for example, the problem of recovering the potential from the while function is the special case of this problem. Moreover, the inverse two spectra problem is also a special case of this problem. So how we solve it? It's, it, it's quite interesting. So we just use the data of the problem to again find the coefficients of the Neumann series of Bessel function representation at the last point. So we just put our series representations, we just put uh, our series representations here, okay, and find the coefficients gn of L, sn of L. After we have found these coefficients, so this is just detail, we uh, 
Um, so we, we can uh, consider, of course, the truncated system. We find several first coefficients, gn of L, sn of L. In practice, it can be eight coefficients, 10 coefficients, it's sufficient, okay? Uh, and after that, we use them to compute the functions phi n of rho L and sn of rho L, but for any rho. This gives us the possibility to compute the zeros of these functions. In other words, to find two spectra. Okay, so we find two spectra, the uh, Dirichlet Neumann spectrum and the Dirichlet Dirichlet spectrum. We obtain the inverse uh, two spectra problem and solve it by, uh, as I explained before. So this is just an example of, of a recovered uh, potential from the plane wave. Uh, so this data, plane wave type data, were given just at 30 points, at 30 values of rho k, and this is how this uh, not, not very nice potential uh, was recovered by this method. So first we find the coefficients at the last endpoint, second we, f we use them to find the two spectra, and we solve the, the inverse two spectra problem, so to, to obtain this uh, stuff. And uh, next, uh, the application of uh, this technique for recovering, uh, for uh, solving the inverse problems on quantum graphs, is, uh, uh, in fact, on quantum tree graphs, uh, up to now, just without cycles. But I, I believe that with cycles, it, it should also work. So how it works here, uh, the situation is the following. So, uh, so first of all, uh, these compatibility conditions at the e interior vertices, uh, they are given in the following way. The solution should be continuous and uh, the so-called Kirchhoff-Neumann condition, which means that the sum of all the derivatives from uh, all edges should be zero. The, there can be other, of course, conditions here, but uh, this is the, the most uh, natural and uh, so we, we, we work with it. Uh, now, uh, so uh, the problem which I, I'm presenting to you here, here consists in the following. We are given the so-called while matrix, which means uh, just that. Uh, so f consider one boundary vertex and a solution, which is one at that vertex, and zero in all other at all other boundary ver vertices. Okay, this is a so-called while solution. So uh, let us suppose that we have the given the derivatives of this solution at all uh, boundary vertices. So these derivatives give us one um, row of the while matrix and. So change the, the boundary vertex, you obtain the second row of, of the while matrix and so on. So in fact, the while matrix is nothing but the Dirichlet to Neumann map because if you have an arbitrary initial condition, okay, then to obtain the derivative of, of, uh, of this solution at the boundary points of the graph, you just uh, multiply by the transposed uh, while matrix, this initial condition, and that's it. This is why it is uh, nothing but Dirichlet to Neumann map. So, given this Dirichlet to Neumann map at just at some points, lambda k, we should recover q uh, in all edges, uh, on all edges. This is the problem which we solve here. So, uh, uh, the approach consists in the following. We, com uh, we could combine the approach developed by Sergei Avdonin, uh, joined to, uh, with Kurasov, uh, which they call the leaf peeling method, which allows uh, one, in fact, to do the following. If I can recover Q here, uh, this, this is called a shift uh, on, on the uh, graph. Uh, then I can cut out this, uh, this um, uh, uh, leaf edges and recompute the while matrix for the new smaller graph. 
This is the leaf peeling method. So we combine this approach with the approach which I explained for solving the sturm liouville problem. And in fact, okay, <laughs> sorry for, for this, but in fact, everything reduces uh, to the following stuff. Uh, so from the data which we have, we construct uh, simple linear uh, systems of algebraic equations just to find the Again, the coefficients gn and sn at the last point of each edge. Uh, and from this information, again, we construct two spectra and solve the uh, inverse two spectra problem on each edge. Okay, this is the, <laughs> in general the, the approach. And just to, to show you some, uh, something, for example, uh, for this graph, okay, which already requires the leaf peeling, uh, uh, one step leaf peeling. Uh, we, this is how these uh, potentials were recovered. So uh, uh, you see that, uh, uh, the, well, numerically it works uh, really uh, very well. So it's just uh, in all cases, just 10 coefficients were used. This is why n here is nine. And uh, uh, so, before leaf peeling and after leaf peeling, uh, for example, this is the comparison. This potential was reconstructed before and this after. So you see that there is a small difference, but of course, numerically, it's, it's very satisfactory. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. <laughs>